Let's look at question 16. In the figure, angle A, the angle BAC is 90 degrees. Angle BAC, so that's A here is 90 degrees. Angle ACB is 37. ACB, 37 degrees. Angle BC is BC is 10. The length of the side BC is 10 centimeters. The length of AC in centimeters is as this length. What is this length in centimeters? Right now, yeah, they have them in this form. So let's look at it. We're looking at AC. You know that AC is adjacent to 37. It runs right alongside 37. All right. If it was AB, AB would be the opposite side because AB is on the left and the angle is on the right. But AC is adjacent to the 37. Now, remember, we have the three main three gratias. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, this is the opposite side, AB. Now, they did not give us AB and they did not ask for it. So we're not interested at all in the opposite. Sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. We're not using that. So not using the sine. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Let's talk, this include opposite. So we're not using tangent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. They asked us for the adjacent and they gave us the hypotenuse. So cosine is what we'll be using. All right. Cosine of 37 is the adjacent, which is AC, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. BC is 10. All right. Now, we want to find out what AC is. They ask for AC. Let's get, off, get rid of the 10, multiply by 10. 10 cancels 10. So AC is multiply by 10 here. 10 times cos 37, so it's 10 cos 37, which is B. So that's question, what again, 16? Question 16. Sixteen is B, right? You say seventeen is A, but we're going to see why seventeen would be A. But let's erase the word here and look at question seventeen. All right, question seventeen. Which of the following sets represent the relation F? of x is mapped onto x squared plus 3. Now let's see. You put in the number on the left and you get out the number on the right. So x is the first number. When you work out the function, you should get the number that's on the right. Now, if you put in 0, when you work it out, according to these, you should get out 3. Well, we're not necessary, it's not necessary to test whether 3 will work because all of them are in 3. You're sure it would work. But anyway, we're not in exam now. We have a little time. So let's see what would happen to 0. What we have is f of x is equal to x squared, 0 squared, plus 3. 
is 3. So you put in 0, you get 3. So everything is okay here. It's 3. But now, when you put in 1, what do you get out? When you put in 1 for x, a says you get out 4, b says you get out 5, d says you get out 1, c says 4. So there is a little dispute here as to what you get out when you put in x is equal to 1. Let's try. 1 squared plus 3. 1 squared is what? 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 plus 3 is 4. You should get out 4. B says 5. You know the answer can be B. B is out. D says you also get out 1. D is out. So we left to contend with A and C. The answer is either A or C. So let's move to the next number. <laughs> you put in 2. What do you get out? Well, let's see what's going to happen. When you put in 2, you either get out 7 or 5 according to these. We're not looking back at B and D anymore. We know those are wrong. Now, you will say 2 squared plus 3. 2 squared is what? 4. 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. Ah, so A says 7. D says 5. D is out. The only answer left correct is A. So question 17 is A. 17A. Right. Alright, now let's erase these. We can move on to question 18. See what 18 says. It says, let's zoom it up a bit. Question 18 says, if P minus 3 is the largest of four consecutive odd numbers. Then the smallest is. Right. Four consecutive odd numbers. Remember what odd numbers are? Like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and so on and so forth. Consecutive odd numbers. It's like saying you have say, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. These are consecutive odd numbers. Now, from looking at this, I separate them with commas. You know, you move from 3 to 5 by adding 2 to 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So to go forward to the next odd number, you add 2. Here, this is the largest of 4. P minus 3 is the largest of 4 consecutive odd numbers. So you need to go back to the one before it. When you have odd numbers, how do you go back to the one before? From 11 to 9? Well, you minus 2. Say 11 minus 2 gives you 9. From 9 to 7, you say 9 minus 2 gives you 7. From 7 to, nine, to 5, you say 7 minus 2 gives you 5. So to go to the next odd number just before, then you minus 2. So this is P minus 3. Then you minus 2. Alright? Here, P minus 3 minus 2. Let's write back P minus 3 minus 2. The, not, the odd number that would come here would be this. Remember, this is P minus 3 minus 2. So this is the same number. And then minus 2. And you keep doing that. Alright? Now, the smallest one. There are four. This is 3 so far. What's the smallest one? This, I'm running out of space here. Let me write it down here. This number is P minus 3 minus 2 minus 2. Same number here. 
then the new minus 2 would come here so what happens here p minus 3 negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5 minus 2 that's negative 7 minus 2 more that's negative 9 all right so remember it's like you have the number line 0 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 negative 6 negative 7 negative 8 negative 9 you're at negative 3 minus 2 you end up at negative 5 minus 2 more if a negative 7 minus 2 more gives a negative 9 so it's p minus 9 18 is b so question 18 b right all right let's just take a break here and we move on next time